I've learned firsthand what it's like to buy a house that needs a bunch of work, do a ton of construction to it, sink a lot of money into it, and then turn it into something absolutely great. It's definitely not like what you see on TV. They jump into some of the bad aspects of it, but it's nothing like when your emotions and your money is on the line. So today we're gonna go over some pros and cons of what it's like going through the renovation process and if you should buy a house that is a fixer upper as your first home. Now, my name is Sam Oler and I'm a realtor in the greater Cleveland area. And if you're thinking about moving this way, awesome, feel free to reach out to me. I help a ton of people move here every year. But if you're just watching this video because you wanna decide whether or not you want to have a fixer upper as your first home, then I hope the things that we go over today are gonna to help you make your decision. Now I've done some sort of renovation to every house that I've lived in since 2017 when I bought my first house. And the first house that I bought was actually a small Cape Cod home and it was in outdated condition. It wasn't terrible. The first things that I did when I moved in were lay flooring and paint the walls. And I also built a bedroom in the basement so I could get some roommates in there paying me some rent. Now when I did that, that was the single best decision I've ever made because I ended up getting a free house out of it. I got to have some separation and choose who I lived with. And then I was also able to capitalize on the equity that I built. Once I bought my second house, I did a full on live in renovation where I lived in the house while I was completing all of the construction. And you can go and see that on my other YouTube channel. The link will be down in the description. And then I ended up moving again and doing the same thing, just not living in it. Now this process does have some absolutely rewarding effects on your life. So let's hop right into the pros of buying a fixer upper. Now the first pro for buying a fixer upper home is going to be that you get a lower purchase price. Chances are the house that you're going to buy is going to need a lot of work and it's going to drive a lot of the people away from wanting to buy it. So with less competition, competition comes a lower price and then also you're going to get the ability to be able to negotiate down further. Once you get that house under contract and you conduct your inspections, you're more than likely going to find something wrong that you didn't see on your walkthrough that is going to allow you to drop the price even further from what you have it at. The other benefit that the, getting that lower purchase price is going to give you is maybe you maxed out on your mortgage at right around 350000 and you could get into a nicer condition house but it's smaller in one neighborhood or you could spend that same money and get a bigger house that needs some work in a different neighborhood that maybe you can't afford if it was fully renovated or if you had to go up against multiple offers. That's similar to what I did with my second house where I got into one of the best school districts in the Cleveland area and I only paid $150,000 when the average for that city is sitting right around $250,000. And I'm getting ready to refinance that property today for right around $290,000. So realistically, I never would have even been able to live in that area if I had gone after the house that didn't need a lot of work. The second pro for buying a fixer upper home is going to be the fact that it's going to be fully customized now with all the customization that you have access to, you're going to be able to choose what floors go in, what color the walls are painted, the layout of the home in some cases if you're willing to take on a bigger project. You get to choose what cabinets go in, the countertops, the backsplash, what type of tile shower surround you may get, and so much more. So you're going to be able to pick a style that suits your needs and cater to it perfectly. And in the end, it's going to be something that you're really excited about that you may not have been able to get if you just bought a fresh flip from someone who was an investor. As far as the third pro goes for buying a house, that needs some work is you have the possibility of increasing that home's value. And I kind of touched on that already. I bought a house for 150,000, put about 50,000 into it. And then I ended up getting over 90 grand worth of equity in the home after the remodel was finished. Now, something to keep in mind when you're buying a house that needs work is you need to be able to factor in the cost that you're going to put into it. And if you're looking to make money on it, like I did, then you're going to need to think about the purchase price and then also the price that it's going to sell for after it's renovated. And then what you do is you take the final price of what it's going to be worth after the renovation, the after repair value, and then you subtract how much the renovation is going to cost. And then you also need to subtract the cost of the home. And that will give you what your potential profit is. Now, if you're putting it into an investor mindset, a lot of people like to make that 20% profit, depending on what the home is. If it's a more expensive home, sometimes people are okay making a smaller percentage to if it's a cheaper home, you need to make a bigger percentage. So it's really going to cater to what area you're moving to and what your price range is. But that's a general rule of thumb is 20%. So just make sure that you're buying right if you're going to go through this process expecting to make some money. Now the fourth pro for buying a house that needs some work is that you're going to be able to put priority on the areas that matter to you most. In most cases, if you buy a house that's already been worked on, you're probably gonna have the similar quality of product throughout the home, whether it be some cheap shaker cabinet or if they just use a drop-in shower surround, just stuff like that you're not gonna be able to customize super easily or you'll have to pay for it afterwards if you wanna make that change. With the fixer upper, you're gonna be able to negate that. So maybe you don't 
don't care as much about a bathroom as you do the kitchen. You could spend more money in the kitchen and get a more luxurious finish as far as that goes compared to what you would get in the bathroom. Same thing if you want to change the layout, you can pull out a wall, you can add a wall, you can add on to the house. It allows you to be a lot more creative with the design of your home and how you choose to attack it. Because realistically, you could always live with an outdated bathroom and then go into it and renovate it further down the road. And you'll still have those nice modern amenities somewhere else in the house that will keep you happy with the place that you're living. Now, don't let all of the pros get you too excited about buying a fixer upper because there is a lot of bad that comes along with it. Now, the first con of buying a house that needs some work is that you're going to have budget challenges. As you go through the construction process, there's going to be a lot of unforeseen bills that can and will add up. If your budget is already sitting pretty tight and you find something behind the walls that needs to be updated, it could totally blow that out of the water and it puts you in a really tricky position to be in. Almost every project that I've taken on has had some sort of unforeseen bill. And in the case of the house that I currently live in, I bought it during the winter when it wasn't too wet and the crawl space actually was having moisture seep into it. And we were having some pretty bad problems with trying to keep the humidity down in there. Now what I ended up having to do was seal off the crawl space and treat it like a basement so it's all insulated down there. It's got a massive dehumidifier. And then I went outside, brought in extra dirt to put up against the foundation of the house. So it works its way down and away from the house rather than being pitched towards the house and forcing all of the water down into the crawl space. That expense alone added about $10,000 worth of work that I didn't even know was coming because it was dry out. There was no moisture in the basement when I bought it. And then as it got warmer and the snow melted and the rain started coming, that's when the problem became more apparent. Now I can't blame the previous owner for it because they may not have even known because the crawl space is one of those places that you don't really go as a homeowner. Realistically, take whatever your contractor quotes you and add about 10% to it and you'll be okay. And that will help cover those unforeseen expenses. Now moving into con number two for buying a house that needs some work, you're probably going to end up taking a longer time than expected. The time that's necessary to put towards a rehab on a home is a lot longer than most people are going to think. You watch TV and you can see these people finish a house within 30 minutes of you sitting there. But what you don't realize, it takes a couple months. And if you're doing the work yourself and you've never done it before, you're going to go through a lot of pain as far as having to redo things, break it out and try again. It's just going to be one of those things that eats up a lot of your time. When I did my first live-in renovation, it probably took me about two months of working on it every day by myself and having help here and there. Sometimes if you go and watch those videos, you'll see that I pretty much did the majority of it by myself. Now that's a huge job to take on on your own. But now I go back to that house and I see its transformation and it just gives me that really great sense of gratitude. But it was a long process. If you have a contractor doing work, chances are if they're doing a full renovation on the house they can get out of there in about one to two months but depending on what you're doing and if they find extra things wrong it can take as long as six months and the real issue with the time is not really the fact that you've got to put more time in it it's the fact that you're not going to be able to spend as much time socializing with your friends relaxing enjoying your quality of life because it's so easy to get caught up in constantly working on the house and thinking about it now as far as con number three goes for buying a fixer upper you're probably going to have some unfinished projects when you get into it now when i was living in that second house that i bought I got about 90% of the way done with it and then I kind of called it quits. There were some doors that didn't have doorknobs on them. There were a lot of doors that were not painted. A couple of the windows were not trimmed out and some of them didn't have paint on the trim that was already there. It was just that last 10% that held me up and it holds up so many different property owners because once you have a long day of work and you're living in a house that's pretty much livable, you're not going to want to do any extra work to it. After I moved out of it, I ended up hiring a friend of mine to go in there and finish the last little bit for me so that way I could focus on some other things. Now in my third house that I did, I made sure it was 100% done before I moved in. And by doing that, I didn't give myself any chance of possibly not finishing something and not having the house look presentable for when people show up. I wanted to have a bunch of parties and friends over at the old one, but I never got a chance to because I wasn't happy with how the house would present. At this new house, I'm throwing significantly more get togethers and it is so much more enjoyable. So that is a little bit of a pro tip. If you have the opportunity, definitely take the time to finish the house completely before you move in into it. Now con number four for buying a house that needs work, you're probably going to run into some sort of financing issue. Whether it be on the initial buy or on the construction, you're probably going to have some sort of issue. I already touched on the fact that it's going to cost more, but if you're using a conventional loan or an FHA loan, which is not super easy to do, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you have to, there's ways around it. Feel free to reach out to me. I can help you with it. During that appraisal process, these houses have to live up to a certain standard for the loan to go through for the bank to allow you to borrow that money. Now, as far as going 
over budget with your renovation goes, where's that money gonna come from? Are you gonna have to rack up credit cards? Are you gonna have to take out another personal loan? There's so many different things that could go wrong with the financing that you're gonna need to keep in mind and have backup plans. So that way, if it does happen, you're not gonna be scrambling at the very end. Or worst case, get stuck having to sell the house mid renovation. If you do go the credit card route, you're gonna be paying a super high interest on those. And I fell victim to that myself. I was the person who racked up the full renovation on the credit card and then paid it off throughout the years that I lived there. Now, luckily it was a little easier for me because I'm commission based, so I could just go work harder, make more money to pay those off. However, if you're working a salary job and you only get a set per amount per month, you're gonna have some issues. The financial strain that it may cause may not fit your lifestyle or something that you wanna take on. Now, kind of number five for buying a home is the most important one, and that is the highs and lows of each project. What they show you on TV as far as the negatives go isn't really touching the surface of what it's really like. When you're living in a construction zone and you go to bed and it's a dusty mess, it's not a fun time. And you need to prepare yourself for that if that's something that you're taking on. Also, you're gonna run into some pretty tough days where nothing just seems to be going right. And those are the days that I dread. But I was lucky enough to find out very quickly that if I just stop working for the day, go somewhere else, relax, take a break, and then come back the next day and work on it, it usually goes a little bit better. And that can happen with anything as simple as painting a wall. The amount of stress that doing a renovation puts on your body, it really takes a toll over time and you're probably not even gonna notice it until it's too late. So if you are taking something like this on, on, you need to keep your mental health in check. It is so important. You don't want to potentially ruin a relationship or mess up your brain chemistry by taking on something as stupid as a house renovation. Now, the other thing that you want to keep in your mind is it is highs and lows. So with the highs, they definitely outweigh the lows. Once you get the house renovation done, it's going to be something that you're super proud of. But it's super important to learn these things as soon as you can because it's going to help you out a lot in your process. Now, I've been doing construction since I was 16, so I've been learning little tips and tricks here and there as far as getting through the whole renovation process, especially on those days that you have to work and you feel like nothing's going right. No matter the type of project that you take on, whether it be just a light rehab that includes paint and floors and maybe some cabinet painting, those are the ones I always recommend people take on because it's a good way to dip your feet in, get your toes wet, and understand whether or not the renovation process is for you. Now, in reality, most people aren't gonna end up liking it, but it's worth a try in my opinion just because of the pros that it offers. But no matter what, you probably are going to run into issues and it's just getting over those hurdles and getting over those hurdles is going to make it totally worthwhile as far as taking the work on yourself goes I wouldn't recommend it personally I would just have someone do it just because it's gonna save you a lot of stress and time but if you're like me when I was young and I was in the situation where I had to do it myself it's worth it putting in that work so that way you could set yourself up for success in the future nowadays I'm more on the managerial side of the construction so that way I'm not putting my body through a lot of stress and I can focus on other things but don't get me wrong I absolutely love love working on houses and I'm probably always going to have some sort of project going on that is for myself just so I can keep my brain busy and learn new things that way I can help out my clients even better in the future. I hope this video helps shed some light on the topic of house renovations and whether or not you should take it on for your first home. Once it's all done it can be extremely rewarding not only financially but also emotionally. If you have any interest in taking on a project like this and you have some questions feel free to reach out to me. All of my contact information is down in the description if you're trying to buy it in the Cleveland area. If not, just reach out to me on social media. I'm happy to talk when I have a free second. Now, if you find yourself down in the description, hit that like button and also the subscribe button because it's going to keep you up to date with everything that I have going on and also everything that Cleveland has going on. I do a lot of videos of what it's like living in the Cleveland area and also the Cleveland real estate market. So if that interests you, definitely stick around. But with all of that being said, I'm going to leave the video there. I'll catch you in the next one.